<sighs> we can uh, as well go now into the full three-dimensional basic state and look at both uh, meridional and vertical propagation of uh, perturbations from the extra tropics and this is easily done by going into now uh, the potential vorticity because the mid-latitude dynamics are best understood in potential vorticity especially the isentropic uh, coordinate and uh, potential vorticity in that. So the section we will look at goes from uh, the uh, storm track that comes off of Asia over here has lots of uh, eddy activities and perturbations especially in the uh, winter months and uh, going across the equator to the mid-latitude westerlies in the southern hemisphere and going through the westerly duck. Uh, that we have been talking about with the easterlies on either side and the westerly duct uh, in the middle. So this is the uh, uh, isentropic potential vorticity which we will define in a minute and you can see the strong gradient here with high values towards higher latitudes, positive in the northern hemisphere, negative in the southern hemisphere, uh, becoming basically uniform and weak in the deep tropics. But we'll see that the variance is still high, so there is some uh, something that's producing time variability uh, with the weak mean. Um, Let's start with the vertical cross sections as well because we are going to also look at vertical propagations. We are looking at uh, uh, two surfaces in the end. We'll look at the 315 Kelvin surface that's here in the lower uh, atmosphere uh, passing through the uh, westerlies and the easterly dome. This is the easterly dome. Uh, and the 345 uh, Kelvin uh, dome, uh, the uh, potential temperature uh, isoplet that's up here going through the uh, uh, jet stream uh, at uh, in the upper atmosphere. Uh, so we are going across. Uh, this section is going from 60 west and to 160 east in the meridional direction into. So basically, we are going uh, from here. Uh, to here. So 60 west uh, is here and uh, 160 east is up here. So just make sure you orient yourself. Okay, so this is the northern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere. We are looking at the uh, zonal basic state and uh, Q uh, here shown in, in isentropic potential vorticity which is uh, positive in the northern hemisphere and negative in the southern hemisphere with the zero contour basically going right through uh, the equator. Okay, and that's our easterly dome. You remember our potential temperature structure increases upward with the uh, dipotential temperature just being uh, stable and this is the structure we get increasing towards higher latitudes from low latitudes. Okay, all those basics you remember. So look at the distribution of the mean isentropic potential vorticity and its standard deviation uh, for uh, December, January, February. Uh, and uh, what are, so looking at the uh, upper level 345k and lower level 315k. So lower level basically has easterlies uh, over the low latitudes and it has the westerly duct at the upper low latitudes and low altitude uh, has the westerly duct in the upper uh, level of the atmosphere right this is what we are interested in to contrast uh, meridional propagation as well as vertical propagation okay so the variance of the isentropic potential vorticity shows you the uh, winter time activity being very strong with a strong stretching variance going here from the storm track off of Asia and there is a storm track from uh, the uh, west coast of US going uh, in this direction with uh, higher uh, variance here than would be indicated by the mean okay so you can see now the lower level the variance is still high at higher latitudes, lower in the lower latitudes, um, but uh, 
there is still this uh, gradient of potential vorticity. Potential vorticity has uh, many interesting uh, properties that are what make it such a good tracer almost for dynamics. So we'll look at the structure of the mean flow fields in the upper and lower troposphere starting with the isentropic uh, potential vorticity defined as minus g eta theta times d theta dp. This is the um, vertical gradient in the pressure coordinate and minus uh, this eta theta is the total uh, vorticity with zeta in the isentropic coordinate the relative vorticity plus the planetary vorticity uh, times the uh, gradient in the vertical so this has what is called an invertibility principle so if you know uh, the isentropic potential vorticity between two isentropes uh, as seen here for example and if you know the mass distribution below and the uh, static stability and few properties then there are a few rules of thumb that allow you to derive uh, various other quantities like winds and uh, various circulation patterns geopotential etc by knowing the uh, isentropic uh, potential vorticity okay so rule of thumb uh, one a positive uh, Q anomaly is associated with the positive absolute vert vorticity anomaly and vice versa uh, in the northern hemisphere, a positive Q anomaly, isentropic potential vorticity anomaly, is associated with a positive static stability anomaly and a negative static stability anomaly is immediately above and below. Uh, opposite occurs in the southern hemisphere. So basically, as uh, the uh, isentropic anomaly moves, it adjusts the air column, the uh, relative vorticity will change, stability will change and that's what connects the asyntropic vorticity to the geopotential and the dynamics. That's what gives us the invertibility principle. The degree to which the flow associated with an anomaly penetrates upward or downward is proportional to the Coriolis parameter, planetary vorticity, and inversely with the static stability. You can think of it as stretching the uh, air column. Remember the ice skater example. As you uh, move the air column and stretch it, you are going to uh, change the total vorticity basically by changing relative vorticity because you are also changing planetary vorticity. Given the fields of Q, it's a straightforward matter to determine the wind field qualitatively using the first rule, then apply the conservation principle and to first order interpret the time evolution in terms of the advection of Q. Okay, so we'll with that background, we'll look at the transient behavior of perturbations uh, going from X to Y. So this is what you have to basically remember, that we are not in the meridional or zonal direction, but we are going along this uh, track that's going from the northwest to the southwest through the westerly duct in the deep tropics. That's just the setup of our uh, analysis that we will look at. And the message is still the same. Westerly duct favors the penetration of the extratropical perturbation into the tropics and there is also vertical propagation associated uh, with this uh, meridional propagation.